Good morning, good morning. Thank you for tuning in. This is Angela, and welcome to Walking in Purpose with your strategist, Angela Thomas-Smith, for a time of educated empowerment and encouragement on the Kingdom Influencers Network broadcast. We are providing the ultimate E3 experience to help you on your journey in discovering your purpose. Again, I am Angela Thomas-Smith, your host, You're a walking in purpose strategist here to release strategies and revelations to unlock your purpose within you for the building of the kingdom. In this episode of Walking with Purpose, we will be interviewing Kiana F. Brown as she shares her journey from prison to purpose, how she turned her mess into a message to reach others. Before we get deep into the show, I always like to pray. So I'm going to pray quickly. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you yet again for an opportunity to come before your throne, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for Kiana and coming on the show to be interviewed and to be, to share with your people on today, Lord God. Lord, I ask that you will use her to witness to those that are listening today. Somebody is going through some things that she's been through in her past. And she's, as she share, Lord God, I ask that you touch them and let them know that it's going to be okay. That if she survived, that she overcame, they can too. So, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for yet another opportunity that we can share with your people, Lord God. Lord, I ask that you use us according to your will for our purpose in your kingdom. These things I ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. I thank God for allowing us to cross paths. You know, I tell people all the time that... um, God, he don't put people in, in, in the midst, in my presence, just for any old reason. So I know that it okay. is ordained um, of him. And I knew, he knew that this day would be this day and that we would co- come across each other. So I thank God yes, for man. for um, allowing me the opportunity to be able to interview you and for you to be able to share your journey um, with people um, along the way. So I'm going to read a little bit of your bio um, before we get started. Kiana Brown is a native of Washington, D.C. She's an entrepreneur, a speaker, an author, and a mentor. Kiana uses her past experience, life experiences to inspire women to push past their pain and forgive. Four years in prison ignited her to never turn back. Kiana uses today as a stepping stone for a greater tomorrow. Thank you for sharing that, Kiana, and and using a stepping stone, your today as a stepping stone for a greater tomorrow. That that is a uh, awesome um, quote there. Um, Thank you. That is an awesome quote. So, Kiana. If you would yes, please share a little bit um, about yourself. I, I know we, we touched on a little bit, but um, you can go in as depth if you like. Um, just share with the listeners um, what is placed on your heart to share with them today and how um, maybe you can encourage them to walk in their purpose. Okay, sure, sure. Good morning, good morning. I just wanted to thank you uh, for this opportunity to have this interview and I am just so honored to be able to be before your, your platform just sharing my stories and my experience about how I let my pain push me into purpose. Uh, I served about four years in prison, and during that time I saw a lot of stuff. I saw people come in. I saw people go out. I've seen people who were addicted to drugs. Uh, and just, just kept repeating a cycle. Um, I'm not sure if a lot of you know, but the statistic says that 78% of people who are incarcerated are usually going to come back. So how was I going to put myself in the place to not be within that percentage to come back? And I had to basically just formulate a plan, as you would say, made, it, made to speak a, a roadmap for what I was going to do when I came out so that I would not fit into that statistic or fall into that category. And so over the time, I just thought about what my passion was. 
And I realized that I had a passion for writing. That's something that I started in the ninth grade, which I did not know was going to stick with me, but I had started to write stories and poetry and things like that. And I also had a great, great passion for animals because in my youth, uh, I dealt with some challenges of being overweight and not having a lot of friends, and animals were my constant. They were the the source that just gave me energy and kept me uplifted, alongside with the spirituality that my grandmother introduced to me at an early age uh, as going to church and worshiping and praising God. So with those things, I had to figure what I could do with those uh, few selections that I had um, to make a better life for myself when I came home. So I decided that I was going to map out this roadmap, and I was going to make sure that I did point A, B, C, and D. There were actually four things that I decided to do. I was going to come home, and I had to, of course, get a job. So I needed to reenter myself back into uh, into the world, to the work world. And that was a little, little bit challenging due to the fact that I was, one, in the halfway house and trying to find a job that would allow me to work a schedule that would fit with me having to go back into that halfway house. And that was a great challenge. I can remember very vividly one day I was just trying my best to get a job. It was a snowstorm, similar to what today is. Um, it's kind of it's snowing outside, but this one was a little bit worse. Uh, it was, like, really cold. I had on dress clothes, just trying to really, really impress. And I went out for a McDonald's job. A lot of people would say, wow, you did all that for a McDonald's job, but you never know what opportunity is going to lead you to the next. So I pressed for it, and I took that, and I got sick but I ended up getting the job. And while I got the job, there were people who were working with me that had been there for several years before I'd even gotten there. Well, with persistence and pushing and making sure that I achieved my highest goal of excellence and no matter what I did, I became a manager or, should I say, a, a, a crew leader, um, then a manager, all within a matter of three months. So there were some people who were not happy about my progressing that fastly within that corporation of McDonald's, but I had to do what I had to do. And some people say, you know, they may ask you the question, does it take all of that? It takes all of that for me to be successful. Whatever it is that I have to do, it takes all of that. So for you, if you're willing to go ahead and push and do whatever it takes, if someone asks you that question, I want you to say, yes, it takes all of this for me to be my best me. So once I got that job, I had to realize or, or try to figure out how to get back into the pet care industry. And so that was my second thing to do was not only just have a job, but to re-enter back into what my passion was. Before incarceration, I was so graciously placed in a facility where I was able to learn the art of creative, of creative grooming and grooming without having to pay. So I needed to get back into that field and kind of find myself all over again, uh, find out how to use those clippers again, how to reconnect with the animals that I cared for so much. And I was so gracious that I kept trying, kept trying, and it goes back to, again, if you're willing to do all of that, then it's going to work out for your better good. I went to a pet co, and I said, hey, this is what I'm going to do. I'm a groomer, and, you know, I want to get a, a job here. And the guy told me, he said, well, um, if you want to get a job here, show me what you can do. You can come back. I said, sir, no, I can show you now. Is there something that I can do that I can show you right now? And he just stepped back and like, the way you're dressed, yes, sir, however you want, I can show you right now. So he allowed me to do that. Um, I had to go because I had to take my grandmother to the doctor at the time. But then I told him, I said, I'll come back when I'm done. If this pet is still here, I'll finish the pet. So it took persistence, and it took follow-up. I had to follow through with what I said. So if you're wanting to achieve success, you have to do whatever it takes, or does it take all of that? Yes. And then you have to follow through with everything that it takes. I went back to that job, and when I did that, he was so amazed that I came back. He said, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get you in here. And so that's one of the goals that I completed. The next thing I did was I wanted to become a paralegal. While I was incarcerated, I was awarded the opportunity to learn how to uh, 
look up laws and to help people get time reduced off of their sentences by looking up cases and giving them information that they could use within their uh, case that they were dealing with at the time. And so I, I like the part of helping them. And I wanted to say, well, you know, if the animal thing doesn't work out, what is it that I can do? Because I did not have enough anything else to fall back on. So with that, I said, I'm going to go and be a certified paralegal. So while I I went, got the job at McDonald's, then I moved up the ladder to getting back into the pet care industry. Then I said, well, let me move on to this third thing. I applied for school and I got in uh, and I completed that challenge. It was hard working a job, trying to have a stable living at that time and making sure that I was studying and doing everything that I had to do in order to reach that goal. And through, the, through grace and through prayer and hard work, I, I made it. I graduated, and I ended up still working for the person that I did my work study for. But then I realized I really wasn't that into it the way I was in prison because I really had my hands directly on helping an individual get through a process, helping giving them information so that they could get over a hurdle and help reduce uh, time off of their sentence. So it hit me. It's like, no, I, don't, I didn't really like the, the – the hours on end that I had to spend in the library and, you know, it's like I was giving this attorney all of this information and then they took the information and I, that was it for me. I didn't get to see the excitement or uh, just the, the passion that, that, it, um, that it relates to working with the individual as I'm helping them. So I said, you know, I'm going to stick with grooming. And so I also wanted to write a book and I had – at this time, gotten so far into the pet care industry where I opened up my own business. And it's amazing to see yourself grow, but it's amazing to see how you can push yourself with prayer and perseverance to get to your next level. So while having this place, this uh, facility, which is Pooch Styles, the current business that I own, I uh, opened in 2012, uh, I said, you said you were going to write a book when you came home. Where's your book? And that's another thing that I uh, tell people all the time. If you say that you're going to accomplish a goal, you need to make sure that you're doing what it is that you say. That's one thing I always do. I stand behind my word, regardless if it's a word that I'm giving to you or if it's a word that I've given to myself. So I gave myself a deadline. And with that deadline, what was I going to write about? I said, you know what? The thing that I know the most. So I wrote a pet care book. It's called How to Care for the Pet I Love. Constantly, people were coming into my salon asking me questions over and over and over again, and I could not reach everyone or give them all of my time. So I said, I'm going to write this book, and it will be out there for the masses. That way, I'm able to help more than just the people that come into my facility. So as I'm talking to you, I'm realizing myself that over these years, the thing that is giving me a drive and pushing me is helping people. And a lot of people don't like to share that with other people. They don't like to help. It's all about yourself. I want us to get out of the place of being about self because at the end of the day, it's not all about you. It's what you can do for the next person. I want you guys to always remember by helping someone else, you're going to get exactly what it is that you need. It may not come from the form of you helping them, but it will come back to you. So I ended up with that book, and I, it's published, and it's out there for everyone to get it. If you uh, are interested, it's on Amazon. It's also on my website, www.kianafbrown.com, um, as well as uh, my second liter literary book, which I am a co-author, and it's called Breaking Free Forever, The Momentous Journey. And that's where I share uh, an in-depth story of my prison experience. Um, but you know, the overall that I want to share with you and get the message out is that you just have to keep going. You never know what your better day is going to look like before the day before it comes. So if you keep pushing and keep pushing and keep going, when that day comes, you probably won't even remember how it felt the day before you made it. So with that, um, I'm just going to say I'm Kiana F. Brown, your forgiveness expert. And for in-depth of more about forgiveness with me, you can visit the website. Again, it's www.kianafbrown.com. I am working on a mastermind of forgiveness. So that will be out soon so you guys can look for that. And there's some other things to come. But I always want you to remember that today, is your stepping stone for a greater tomorrow.
Amen. Amen. I tell you, I have no questions that I would have to ask because you <laughs> answered all the questions. I, I tell you, I I was just amazed at just hearing your brief um introduction of yourself. Um it, it it it's amazing, um, and how you did not allow your past to hinder your future. And a lot okay. of people get caught up in you know, their past hurts, habits, and hang-ups, and they can't move past what they've done or mm-hmm. what has set them back. And, and you know, I, I just I tell people all the time, it's not about your fall. It's how you recover from your fall and how you pick yes, yourself ma'am. up. You know, because we're going to fall. We all going to fall. We, are, we, fall, we fall daily. But it's about how you recover from that fall and how you pick yourself up, brush yourself off, and move on. Because everybody yes, got a path. Everybody got a path. Yes, ma'am. And God that's just like uh, Les Brown. That, that what your um, it's okay. The statement you just said just made me think of Les Brown. He always says, um, "If you can fall down, if you can look up, you can surely get up." And that's something that I always keep with me. Because no matter how far you fall down, uh, you can always get back up. You know, if you ever notice a baby when they're uh, they're trying to walk, they're learning how to walk, and they're they're, they're holding on to things, and then they fall, and then, you know, what did, what did they do? They get right back up, and they try it again because they do not have the mindset of failure. In their mind, they haven't grasped that, you know, if I can't get back up. So, you know, I try to have that baby mentality with myself. You know, my, no matter how much I fall, I'm dust myself off, and I'm going to get right back up again. Exactly. So there's someone out there listening today. And, and and they've fallen, and and they don't know how to get themselves back up. They they they're in a rut. The, some of them may be contemplating suicide. Some of them are going through depression. Some of them are dealing with mental illness. Some of them are dealing with having been incarcerated. Some of them are dealing with addiction. Whatever they're dealing with on this today, that are tuning in and are listening and thinking that there's no way out. I want to yes, reassure man. them that there is a way out. You've heard this amazing story, testimony, because it is truly a testimony because there was a test that she had to endure, and she endured that test to be able to share this testimony with you guys. And not only that, some mess came up in her life, and she was able to get through that mess and bring you this message on today. So whatever you're dealing with on today, know that you can recover, that there is a future. Because if you if you understand the word of God and truly believe his word, in Jeremiah 29 and 11, he said he had a plan for you to prosper you, for you to be in good health, for you to have hope in the future. Sometimes we stray away from the plan that God had for us because we want to do what we want to do. But we have to remember that no matter what, God's plan for your life is going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass no matter what you do. If you have to go around and around in the circle a hundred times to get to that purpose that he's purposed you for because he had a purpose for you before you were even conceived in your mother's womb, he knew what you was going to endure. He knew the tests and the trials that you were going to face. But I thank God for your testimony. I thank God for allowing us to cross paths. Um, yes. Again, I, I know it was no coincidence because God don't just place people in my life. He placed people in my life for a reason. And it don't yes. just be for a season. So I thank you for sharing with us Amen. on today. I, I, I truly thank you for coming on the show and sharing with the people. Again, um, I want you to share with them how they can get in contact with you if they would like to purchase your book. How can they get your book? How can they find out about your, if they're in your area? How can they find out about your shop? You know, anything that you would like to share before we close out, I want you to share it this time. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for allowing me to, to witness on your platform. Uh, my website is www.kianafbrown.com. I am the forgiveness expert, and if you are dealing with any issue that it's hard for you to let go, uh, there are some simple tactics that I use, um, and just inbox me, or uh, there's an email platform where you can reach me from my website, and we can get up, we can talk, and I can share all of the tools 
uh, that I use to help you implement the power of forgiveness in your life to move on. Uh, I am in the Maryland area, and my shop is called Pooch Styles Pet Grooming. Uh, we're on Facebook. Um, we're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. And that is 7813 Parson Drive in Forestville, Maryland. The zip code is 20747. Again, that is 7813 Parson Drive, Forestville, Maryland, and that is 20747. The website is www.poochstylespetgrooming.com. Uh, there are uh, several engagements that are coming up, so if you go to kianafbrown.com, you can see those. Uh, every single Friday I come to you with Forgiveness Fridays where I am sharing something that God has given to me to give to you guys. So uh, you can join me at Kiana F. Brown on Facebook every Friday morning at 8 a.m. Uh, it's a, a comfortable setting. I'm just being me. I'm being transparent. And if there are any questions that you have, be sure to go in the, through the thread, and I'll, I'll get back to you with those questions, answer them. But it was just an awesome, awesome time here sharing my experiences. Um, and I, I want to share more with the world because I believe the moment that I – silence myself or the moment that I go on mute, I'm not able to do the job or the task that God has entrusted me with. So every time, and this is for you out there, every time that you keep something to yourself, remember, you are possibly holding someone else from going to their destiny. So let's share. We're, uh, we're human. We're, you know, we come from God. We're creatures of giving. We need to give back to one another. So with that, and I'll always say as I said, and I'll say it again, Remember that today is your stepping stone for a greater tomorrow. Thank you. Amen, amen. You have been listening to Walk in Purpose with Angela. I am your host, Angela Thomas-Smith, your Walking in Purpose strategist here on the Kingdom Influences Network broadcast. If this message has empowered you, it truly has empowered me. It made me want to run on and do more. My word is my bond, and I like to stick to my word. Please subscribe to our broadcast. Join us every Monday morning at 9 a.m. If you would like to email me, you can email me at 3-A-L-A-C-2016 at gmail.com. If you would like to schedule a 15-minute free consultation with me to discover your purpose, please reach out to me. Again, I am your Walking in Purpose strategist, Angela Thomas-Smith. Thank you for tuning in, and have a wonderful day.